Thank you very much, Mr. President. Uh, now I open the discussion. If you have questions, commentaries, please ask uh, Mr. Fasal Almond uh, what uh, was inspiring by this uh, speech. Mein Name ist Peter Bukofol. Ich, ich würde die Frage auf Deutsch stellen, dann würde ich den Schuss aus der Brunnen der Rahe der Germanischen Frau Ich wollte äh, Sie äh, bitten zu antworten. Welche ist die Persönlichkeit aus der ÖVP, die Sie am meisten schätzen oder am meisten, äh, sagen wir so, äh, äh, grundgebend für positive Ereignisse in Österreich finden? War das Josef Klaus, der Bundeskanzler, war das Aris Mord, äh, sehr hoch mit und so weiter. Ne? Also in der, in der Geschichte der ÖVP, der Robot 4 und so weiter. Das wollte ich Sie grundsätzlich fragen. Und die zweite Frage, ob, ob in der Telekom-Affäre, telekom affäre der affäre die jetzt ein bisschen äh, ja, in Woge gekommen ist, äh, die ÖVP eine, eine positive Rolle gespielt hat. Das wird okay. Deci, la întrebat care din personalitățile Partidului Populistului Popular au strâng chestii după care a fost subit cel mai impresionantă, care a făcut cele mai multe <coughs> lucruri bune, hai să spunem așa, pozitive pentru Austria și pentru Europa în general, și în legătură cu afacerea de corupție, Telecom Austria, care este poziția partidului și așa mai departe. Vă mulțumesc, Vitan, fiind în zi, și eu de Rumenia. Da, să fie că am Yeah, the first question is, uh, uh, which personalities impressed you most within our parties? And it's not so easy to answer that. I'll try to do so. Uh, the first one that impressed me was our second chancellor, Yuri Saab. Uh, he was uh, the boss of a construction company. And he was... Uh, not just not very much the type of a populist but he was the type of a decider and this uh, was something that impressed me when I was very young because uh, he did not speak very much he was not he was not an extreme Democrat you know when he saw uh, when there was a meeting a session and he saw that he wouldn't get a majority he said, okay, I close this meeting, <laughs> because otherwise it gets a negative result. But he was such a strong personality that people accepted it, you know. Most of the time, of course, you know, this was not so easy. He couldn't do it uh, too frequently, because otherwise it would have been negative. But he was very strong, and he also had a good sense for uh, developments and feelings of people. But uh, if I try to combine it with uh, the words I have said, he tried, when he was convinced of something, he tried to stick at it. Even if he saw maybe the easier way was just you know, to follow the majority. Do not follow the majority by just uh, in the first moment. You know? First of all, try to convince the majority and then follow it, not vice versa. And this is not very easy, you know. Um, as somebody who comes from marketing business, I have learned that, you know, when you develop a product and when you want to sell a product, of course, you have to have a very good connection with people, what they sense, what they think about, and what they feel and what they expect. And what I learned in marketing is something that is very similar to politics. Think about dreams, not only facts. Also about dreams, and people have dreams. I was the first politician who predicted uh, that Czechs and Slovaks would divorce. <coughs> Why? Because I was brought up at the Austrian Slovak border, and from my childhood, I knew the Slovak dream of independence. I knew this dream. And I was sure that sooner or later it would come out. Uh, 
And when I talked about it for the first time, not only the Czech politicians, but also Slovak leading politicians would say, Werner, this is nonsense. This will never happen. <laughs> Suddenly, two or three years later, it happened. <laughs> so uh, what you can learn is that dreams are very, uh, very, very important. And uh, that it is necessary to stick to when you are convinced to it, don't give up your opinion easily. Think it over. Think what is uh, pro, what is contra. And then, if you are still convinced that it's the right way, try to stick it, even if there are troubles and even if it's not easy. For me, it was uh, Josef Klaus one of them. Another one uh, certainly was Josef Klaus. He was a big reformer. He was uh, unfortunately not the prototype of a populist, <laughs> um, and uh, he he made an immensely important step. He finished the grand coalition we had for 20 years after World War II, and in Austria nobody could imagine that there was no grand coalition, and he formed uh, just a single party government. <coughs> This was absolutely important because uh, it was uh, important in the way that you could work out a clear line for every government, but also this change of government and opposition that is necessary for democracy. And so far, this was very, very important. The third one certainly was. Uh, was Arnus Mock. Uh, I would say his greatest strength was tenacity. He was something that who really tried to stay with the problem and who also tried to manage it through. And I just want to tell you uh, an example for it. You know, Arnus Mock was famous for he stood up very early in the morning and uh, started already his work. But we were together then in government, he as a foreign minister, I am as defense minister, and of course, you know, we cooperated a lot. When at midnight the telephone <laughs> rang, my wife used to say, I know it. <laughs> <laughs> and you can't be sure without maybe one exception. It always was Alex. He really worked through, and he even tried when he was also convinced from a specific solution or a question, he tried to influence people. And what he did was, for example, uh, during the transformation of Central and Eastern Europe, during the transformation of uh, uh, of ex Yugoslavia and other developments, he really tried to influence, also from the position of a small country, European politics. He made it by calling uh, Helmut Kohl, you know, he was a good friend of his, by calling, I don't know, the French Prime Minister and State President and other important politicians. Of course, it is necessary to establish a good relationship. And then you also can influence uh, from a weaker position, basically a weaker position on politics in a way uh, that is enormous. Uh, when I mentioned first that uh, I initiated the first uh, defense minister meeting in Europe, I only could do it because I was already a few years in government and therefore knew the people and had uh, also a position that was maybe a little bit stronger than the usual position of an Austrian defense minister. But I also could speak to the French or the British or the German defense minister very clearly and said, I'm convinced, think it over. If you are not happy about it, tell me, whatever. When you have shape for yourself the opportunity to speak out things very clearly. 
And this needs a good basis, a good personal basis of contact. A good personal basis of contact will help you in business and in politics. As I told you, uh, I was sales director for quite a few years. And one of my experiences was that one of the most important things in order to be able to sell products is that people trust you. And people will only trust you if they know you. If they don't know you, uh, there always will be a distance, you know? And it's very similar also in politics. And therefore, I only can say, if you uh, want to be successful and influence other people, then you have to look for, uh, try to get enough contact. Uh, be open, not distant, but try to be open, open yourself. Also, when there are difficult questions, speak it out. And uh, people will learn to trust you uh, also that you are not only looking for a specific benefit for yourself or so, you know. You also have to go sometimes to difficult situations with uh, a position that is in opposition to others. But not too often. Of course not too often. But sometimes this is a very good thing that people also realize it's not only looking for uh, the opinion of the majority also. And the last person I also want to mention, this is Wolfgang Schüssel. I was together with him 10 years in government. Uh, was the there even was a competition between him and me for the party, <laughs> uh, for the party <coughs> presidency. Uh, but I accepted absolutely that he became it. So, but we had a very good relationship also and what I really uh, learned from him you know as I have said I came out from private business we were very successful uh, I was in sales but I never have learned a better salesman in the sense of negotiating in Wolfgang Schüssel it was Nobody from industry and nobody from the big, uh, from the big uh, trading companies or so, but it was him. And uh, what he did was just to prepare every negotiation in a way that he was informed better than everybody else. This was more or less the secret of his success in negotiation. He knew not only the facts, you know, how many percent uh, or euros or whatever uh, this meant, but he prepared also what is the position from this side, from this side, from this side. How far can he go that it is still a success, but that he at least and save his face, that he's not a loser. And this he did for everybody. And uh, so far, he managed to go through really complex and very difficult processes. Um, he never played this out, you know. He gave afterwards even people the feeling when he had brought in an idea that was the idea of anybody else. Uh, but he did it in the way because he knew exactly what is the position of this man, how far can he go, whether he came from the same party or from another party, and what was the point where this man cannot exceed uh, a certain line. Very important for negotiations to, to know this specter of movement from the other side. And when you respect the specter of movement from the other side, then you will have uh, all the odds for yourself uh, in order to get the best result that you can work on. So uh, on the telecom, there was almost no involvement from uh, the side of Austrian People's Party. But we got, got almost all the political blame for it. We were not very skillful at it. 
uh, what is it? Great pity, and it damaged us, it damaged the party in a way that we still feel it, even if it is already almost a year ago that uh, it came out. And uh, we even have uh, to be aware that now we have, um, we will have discussions in Parliament. We have a subcommittee that is responsible uh, to analyze those cases. We probably will get some more blame. Uh, because we were not very clear on in, in some questions. Thank you very much. Thank you. Are there other questions? So somebody? The active corner. The active You mentioned the well in your presentation that in your corridor are different sensibilities of the soldiers and the laws of in order to handle such a situation of having uh, three different routes. The one is that you have to find representatives within your party, people, outstanding personalities, who represent those wings of the party. Because it's necessary when you have a bigger wing in your party that they find a representation where they know, okay, he has the same opinion or a very similar opinion to mine, and uh, he also will stand for my position within the party and within politics. So far, you need, when you have three wings, three main representatives for those uh, three or whatever you call it. You know. Second, uh, it is necessary to open for any of them, for any of them, also a main field uh, of politics. What do I mean? Uh, you have to try to find a field for liberal uh, politicians. This can be in the field of economy or also in some other fields where it is also an advantage for the whole party and the whole development of the society. Conservative. Try to open them a field uh, in patriotic issues, for example. But maybe also in some other fields that are very important. Uh, you know what we Europeans never will understand is American positions in, in many questions. For example, this armament <coughs> question that everybody uh, can have his own weapon and uh, buy his own weapons and nobody will ask for it and then so on. This is a question of conservative, conservatism in America. And the they don't give it up, even if it is uh, sometimes tough for them, you know. They will not give it up because they say, this is the group that stands for it. And we have to try uh, to leave them also uh, their, their playing ground, you know. This is, and the same also for Christian social politics, whether this is family politics or social politics generally, try to find a specific field uh, where you can not only uh, offer them uh, specific programs or so, but also and where they can institutionalize themselves. That's what also, I mean, you will find a similar situation almost 
all bigger European uh, parties from uh, people's parties, I would say, you know, uh, what do the German, the Germans, the, they are doing just the same thing. At the moment, they are in the difficulty that they do not have so clear representatives for everything they did have in the past. One of the biggest uh, or the most important basis for success for Edward Kohl was, for example, that he had uh, a man who engaged himself uh, in social politics and therefore brought him also uh, not only uh, the center-right, but the middle towards the left and made a barrier. This was uh, Minister Blum. Blum yeah? uh, who was not always easy to handle, but uh, who was a representative for every German person, you know, that he meant his social, uh, he meant his social am ambitions and that he tried to bring them through and that he was ready to fight and so on, even if he had the whole industry against him or so. And therefore, uh, I think it's not necessary uh, always to have peace within the party. Usually to have too many discussions is, is deadly, you know, no question about that. But if you have different ideological fields within your party, then try to have representatives and then do not hesitate also to have the one or the other discussion. Of course it will not be good if one side is always the loser and the other side is the winner. <laughs> this should not be good. Sometimes uh, the one side and the other side will have to win and maybe also to lose. But that's what I think uh, is necessary. Dacă nu mai sunt uh, întrebări, comentarii, uh, aș vrea, în primul rând, să vă mulțumesc dumneavoastră că ați răspuns invitației noastre și apoi domnului președinte Faslam pentru această excelentă lecție pe care o puteți utiliza în uh, dumneavo carierele dumneavoastră viitoare, pe care le dorim a fi cât mai bune. Deci, încă o dată mulțumesc și dacă nu ne mai vedem anul acesta, vă doresc sărbători fericite și un an nou bun. Dar să aplaudăm pe domnul Tatăl.